Hi, and welcome to Geographical Analysis, Lecture 2, Characteristics of Geographic Data. In this course, in this class, we are going to go over uh, different ways that we describe data sets. So we're not talking about statistics themselves, but rather we are talking about ways that we classify and describe the types of data sets or the characteristics of the data sets themselves that we collect in order to conduct statistics on. So as a, just a reminder from last class, we went over uh, three different concepts about how we store a data set. The first one is that we have in each data set something called observations. And observations are the actual units that we are making measurements or taking measurements from. So in this case, we have a table of countries, and each country is an observation in our data set. The second concept were variables. Variables are the different features of the observations that we are making measurements about. And finally, we have the data values themselves, and these are the, uh, the, the, the measured values that we make, that we take. And, for example, these numbers don't mean very much by themselves, but because they're organized in a data set in this way, we know that each data value pertains to a specific observation and a specific variable. So in this case, the number 3340, uh, if I were to ask you what that number is pertaining to, well, you can look across the table and know that this number is something about the country Switzerland, and you can look up to the variable name and know that it's something about fertilizer consumption. So you put the two together, and 3340 is the amount of fertilizer consumed in Switzerland. We need to be able to answer a lot of questions about the data set. We need to know where the data are coming from, uh, how, who collected the data, how it was collected, how it was organized, how it was created, put into a file for you to consume how the u individual measurements are, were, were made and stored and how accurate they are. And we need to be able to describe all of this information about the data set. And that data that we, and that information that we are describing the data set with, we're going to call that metadata. Metadata. And metadata is data about data. Let me just write that down so that it's here. metadata, data about data. So when you download a data set to use off the internet, it's often going to be accompanied by some metadata. And the metadata is going to describe the data set to you. And it's usually going to describe, depending on the, if it's GIS data, it might describe some spatial characteristics. If it's other kind of data, it's going to often describe specific things about the type of data that you have. But most generally, or basically, it's going to cover the, the types of things that we are going to discuss in the next few slides. So let's talk about data source. Data are typically categorized into two types primary data sources and secondary data sources. With primary data, uh, primary data are data that the research collects, that the researcher collects in the field. So if I'm doing data collection as a transportation geographer, and I go out into the field and I start counting how many cars drive by on a specific lane or highway on-ramp, I'm out there collecting primary data. And I'm going to use that primary data in my research. And, you know, primary data is great. It's often the best option to collect data that has the best chance of answering your specific research question. But, of course, there are a whole lot of issues with collecting primary data. Uh, the first one is it's very time consuming. So if I want to go out and capture, uh, following up on my example, uh, traffic data out on the street, I might have to spend a couple hours every day during rush hour on every street in the city in order to build my data set. With time cons because it's so time consuming, it's also very costly. Also, if I have to purchase any equipment to do this, it's very costly. Um, it's, a, it's a very complicated process. It's a whole science. Uh, it's a whole 
industry really of, of, of data collection and we're going to you know touch the tip of the iceberg in this class but if you were to continue on in research you can take full courses in in how to collect data properly um, primary data collection could be redundant it means that uh, there's no purpose to collect your own data if the data already exists if it's been collected by someone else if you have access to it you don't have to go out and collect your own data it's a complete waste of time and money and you're making risks taking risks that you're going to uh, mess up your data collection why not just go out and get the existing data but if that data doesn't exist primary data collection really can be your best option and if you're going to go out and collect your data you, I mean this is just the very tip of the iceberg here but there are some considerations you have to take uh, to make so how should you uh, what population are you interested in and how should you sample that population uh, how could you design your survey to best collect the data that you're trying to collect uh, what techniques are you going to use are you going to use field observations? Are you going to have tools to make measurements? Are you going to mail out surveys? Are you going to try to recruit people into interviews? I mean, really, you've got, you know, the preparation that goes into collecting data, and I'm sure most of you haven't actually done any data collection before, but the preparation really is an, en an enormous feat. It might take a year to prepare to collect some data that you then go out and spend one month collecting the data. So we're going to have one lecture on data collection in a few weeks, but just keep in mind that this is an, an immensely complex and important part of the, the, the research process. Now, secondary data, we are going to consider all data collected by individuals, organizations, or government agencies, that, but not you. So any data that was collected by someone else and then given to you for your use is going to be considered secondary data. Secondary data has a lot of advantages. It's less expensive. In the United States, many data sets just come free. We have a, a more and more a, an, a, a, uh, an attitude that data should be uh, free unless it's being used for commercial purposes or businesses are trying to make money from their data, then it's, it's often not free. But um, for example, all the data that the government collects is freely available, census data, economic surveys, agricultural data that the government is, is collecting is made freely available to, to all citizens or all, well, basically all people in the United States, so long as there's no privacy concerns there. And that's not true across the board. For example, in Canada, census data is not free. Uh, and there's some historical reasons why some census agencies in some countries don't make their data freely available and others do. But um, typically, if you have access to secondary data, that you're not going to spend all that much money. And even if you have to purchase the data, it's not going to be as expensive or time consuming as if you were going out to collect the data yourselves. Um, <coughs> someone else had to do all the thinking. Someone else had to... Uh, prepare uh, the data collection instrument, make decisions about where the data are going to be collected from, how the sample is going to take place, what instruments are going to be used, and and that's nice because you might not be an expert in primary data collection, but if you have good access to secondary data, probably the person who collected that data the first time round was an expert in data collection. So, so you can rely on someone else's expertise. Um, also, and this is, you know, this is not always the case, but when we are dealing with data that's collected by organizations or government ed agencies like the Census Bureau, the data are often going to be very comprehensive. That's because the government, for example, is collecting data, uh, one data product that's trying to satisfy needs for many different industries or areas of, of society. And therefore, if you have access to, say, you just need some transportation data, that data set might come with some economic data, some, some demographic data. It's going to be far more comprehensive uh, than if you were to go out and try to collect a specific 
uh, data set about traffic, uh, uh, about traffic patterns in the city. Primarily because in order to collect all of those other extra bits of data would take more time, more money, more planning, and often as an individual researcher going out to collect your own data, you don't have the time and money and expertise to collect all of these different parts of the data set that would round out your understanding of the data. Um, now, there are some challenges with, collect with using secondary data sources. Uh, the, the, the largest challenge comes from the fact that you've given up control over the data set. And you don't know, you weren't part of the, the data collection process, you weren't part of the quality assurance process, you don't know what kinds of errors might creep up in that data set that you didn't have control over. So you could have errors in how the, the, the sample was designed or how the, the, the sample was selected. You might, there might be errors in the equipment used to make th the measurements in your data set. Um, often secondary data is aggregated data, so you're not getting data about individual entities, but instead uh, you're getting data about uh, groups of entities, and we're going to talk a lot about aggregation in this course. Um, but in general, the issue with using secondary data is you don't have control over any of these processes, and you don't know uh, what kind of errors might exist in your data set.